Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna make a super cute denim skirt with like a lot of top stitches and it's just gonna look super cute in my opinion and I'm super excited. Also side note, how do you like when you're here? I'm super happy with it. I actually posted a few reels about the process of me getting my new hair done. So if you're interested in that, hop over to my Instagram and check it out there while you're at it. Also give me a follow there, that would help me out tremendously, so thank you so much. As per usual, the pattern will be linked in the description down below, so hopefully I'll get it up in time. I've been, you know, a bit um, not quite as fast in working, I guess, because I have a slip disc in my neck area so I can't really do much computer work but I will be trying to do as much as I can for you guys so if you'll find the link it would mean so much if you could check it out and support me over that way if not there will be you know an update on my Instagram stories as soon as the pattern or any other pattern really is up so keep that in mind but without further ado let's get started with today's video so this is the front piece the left one that i already finished obviously we have a pocket up here but then also we have another really big pocket down here fully functional for me it's just like a detail that i wanted to include i think this looks really really cool but obviously you can still use that if you like to it's like a really really huge pocket as you can see right here this up here is a normal pocket i made sure that my phone can fit in it as you know we all love our pockets in our clothes so let's make the other one and i started with making the pocket itself like the normal pocket I guess up here so we need our side front piece right here with the pocket cut out there then the upper pocket which I cut out from a lighter denim it just happened to be white doesn't really matter you don't see it and then you'll need the lower pocket which is also to be cut out of the shell fabric right here and with these three layers sandwiched together you'll end up having a normal pocket and everything's going to look really neat and tidy so the first thing that we're going to do is put right sides of the upper pocket and the side front pieces together align it they should perfectly match up and just sew the pocket right here also side note i actually cut out all of the vertical dividing seams with a seam allowance of 1.5 centimeters as well as the back pocket and then also the hem of the pocket because i'm going to do a french seam here but i kept this round area at one centimeter and the waistline at one centimeter as well and i have four centimeters already included into the pattern piece for the hem facing like it's already on there so you don't have to worry about that just add a centimeter at the hem as per usual other than that i think nothing out of the ordinary as i said let's sew this seam right here and since i am working with thicker thread i am also consequently using a thicker needle i am actually working with a 110 needle but i think a 100 needle would have worked as well just so that you know and i'm working with a 30 denim thread i'm gonna cut towards the stitching line right here so that i then can iron the pocket so that the ditch of the seam is only visible on the facing side or like the inside in this case I want to make sure that everything still aligns right here which it should because as I said it's the same size so once that's the case I can top stitch the pocket right here I'm gonna do a double top stitch right next to the fold line and then five millimeters next to that and then I'll attach the lower pocket Now once everything aligns, I can grab my other pocket piece right here. And since I wanna do a French seam at the lower line right here, I'm actually gonna put wrong sides together at that pocket hem. And so at five millimeters to turn everything around and then I can iron and top stitch at five millimeters again to create a French seam. Now 
now that's all done, I can go ahead and pin all layers together here. You can also baste them together. And we're gonna continue with adding the front piece to this seam right here. So the front piece gets just put on right sides together. Just remember that you might have added 1.5 centimeters seam allowance. So I'm gonna sew at 1.5 centimeters here. And then we're gonna do a flat felt seam. So naturally the seam allowance wants to go towards the front piece, but I actually wanted to go towards the side seam. I just like the design for that better once the pocket is in place and everything. So I'm just gonna iron the seam allowance towards the side seam. And you have to be careful at this spot right here in the front so that it doesn't bulge like out weirdly. So just go over it from the right side as well. Make sure that everything looks nice and clean. And now I wanna cut away the seam allowance of the side front piece to about five millimeters. And also, you know, the seam allowance of this, the pockets and everything there. And just as a reminder, so that you know which side you need to cut away, it's always the side you want the top stitches to be, you know, in. Um, because now you're gonna iron the seam allowance towards the inside like this and fold it like that. And now you can add the top stitches from the right side, of course. I always suggest adding the top stitches from the right side rather than the wrong side because the stitches always look better from the right side rather than the, you know, the bobbin thread. Like that. And now from the right side, you can replicate the stitches that you have right here or do whatever top stitches that you like. And now with the front piece completely done, we can work on the front pocket detail. And I have 1.5 centimeter seam allowance around the whole piece. So I wanna go around it and iron the seam allowance towards the inside. And obviously before you sew the whole piece on, you wanna finish the upper part where you actually put your hand in. So I like to clip into the seam allowance as it can be rather tricky to stretch out the fabric that much. So if you open it up like that it's just super easy so just iron it down like that and now you want to turn the you know pre iron side right back so that you can stitch everything on before that though you want to top stitch the upper part for that you want to you know turn out the seam allowance on the sides so that you can have your back tags of your stitches on the part that's not gonna be visible as it's gonna be folded towards the inside. So to put everything now onto the front piece, I like to align it to my side and I'll find the notch right down here for the detail, the front pocket detail, so that I can, you know, align everything from there. Now it should match up pretty well with everything else. And yeah, I'm just gonna go around the whole piece with some pins so that I'm then able to stitch it onto the front piece. And I'm gonna do the same top stitches as I did here. And I'm gonna do a small little triangle right here just to have some strength and it doesn't rip out the pocket. So in my drawing, in my sketch, I added back the uh, top stitches that you can see here from the front dividing seam and then also a seam that goes towards the back and continues on. So that's something that I have to add once the back is done. But I can go ahead and add the top stitches of that front dividing seam back in. Obviously, none of that you have to do. This is totally optional. You can also do whatever top stitches that you like to your skirt. You know, you're the designer here. but. I'm gonna do what I planned, do the top stitches there, and then later on, I'm gonna do the ones through the pocket towards the back. Obviously, that's gonna shrink the big detail pocket, but I don't plan on using it anyways. Like, it's literally just detail for me. So I'm just gonna add the diagonal seam to that as well once it's time for that. But let's add that. 
the back is pretty straightforward. So you want to close the back dividing seam with a flat felt seam. And then you also want to close the center back seam with the same. The back seam is going to be to one side. That's the characteristic of the flat felt seam. You'll also notice that in any denim jeans, honestly, like your eye kind of thinks it's to one side. That's because the top stitches are to one side. Obviously, the seam itself is in the center. But that's just something that you might want to check out if that's something for you or if you want to do it differently. But I'm going to do it that way anyway. So I'm going to do the back dividing seams first, iron towards the center back, and then in the end, I'm going to do the center back seam. Okay, with the back piece now completely done, we can continue with the back pockets. And they're basically the same as the front pocket details. So you want to iron the upper edge of the pocket in first and then top stitch however you'd like to top stitch the pockets and then afterwards you want to do the same to all of the other sides and top stitch that onto your back piece and it's helpful because the pockets are not symmetrical to kind of mark where the side seam or the center back is so I did a little s for the side seam right here so I know that these two will sit somewhat like this in the very end but now let's finish the upper portions right here And now let's iron in the seam allowances on the sides. Now it can be useful to make like a cardboard pattern piece so that without the seam allowance, so you can just place it on the wrong side and then just fold in your seam allowance that way. It's super easy to iron your seam allowance inwards that way. Honestly, I think it's just too much hassle to cut that out. Then I'd rather just, you know, iron the seam allowances inwards like this because it's just a few straight lines, so. To me, that is much easier, but obviously you do whatever you feel comfortable with. Also, as you can see, I definitely did not have the right settings on my sewing machine right here. It goes without say that you have to always check your stitches before you actually go and sew your actual fashion piece. I did that, but since I am working with thicker thread and I am switching between like super thick and then rather thin materials, I sometimes switch the settings and then I am sewing two layers with the eight layer setting. So that just happens uh, just you know, try to avoid that. And essentially you just have to make your thread tension a bit higher. Like for me with thicker thread, the more layers, the less tension it needs, the less layers, the more tension it needs. Now that's cooling down. Let's add the one pocket to the side that it is meant to go. So this one has the side marking right here. So this goes here. Now I'm essentially just using my pattern to see where I have to attach the pocket and I am marking my corner points so that I can now put it onto my skirt and then just add some markings or like pins or whatever to be able to mark where the pocket should go like that. And let's mirror the other pocket to the other side like that. And let's sew around the pockets twice as I did everywhere. And I'm also going to add this triangle on either side of the pocket. With the back now fully done, it's time to add the front pieces to the side seams. I'm going to do flat felt seams on both of the side seams again. So just like that. So as you can see, I have everything stitched together. So just the zipper and the waistband is missing. And I went ahead and added the lines for my top stitches here. Purely decorative, you can skip this part. But the top stitching guide is marked in the pattern if you want to recreate the same thing. So I'm just gonna top stitch right here, straight over top everything. So that does a thing that is actually pretty nice. So my pocket, my actual normal pocket 
reaches until down here. You can kind of see the shadow right here. And my top stitches will go up here, creating this kind of triangle on this edge, which is kind of nice because it stops the uh, like lint and dirt and everything that you have in your pocket from rubbing off of the fabric. And whenever you put something in your pocket or whatever, there's gonna be some lint accumulating somewhere and it likes edges. So by just adding a stopper, seam diagonally on all the edges you actually prevent these spots from occurring so that's a nice thing you can also do a top stitch diagonally right here as well to you know stop that from happening or prevent it from even happening and yeah that's just a small other thing but let's copy this line to the other side and then do the top stitches Okay, now it's time to add the waistband. I have mine prepared already, so you just wanna iron one side in like that and then iron it in half. As I prepare my waistbands usually, so it's always the same thing, with the one thing being different that this time, since we're gonna add the zipper onto this whole piece, you actually want to put right sides together, like waistbands right side and also the skirt right side. Usually I put it on the wrong side to have a, this cover the stitches and have a nice result in the end. But for this you actually need to put it onto the right side of everything. I marked my center back, that's just the center of the waistband, and I'm gonna start putting everything onto the skirt from there. Since I am working with elastic fabric, my waistband seems rather small. <laughs> or rather the skirt just stretched out, even though I used a stay stitch interfacing tape. And then also I added 1.5 centimeters to my seam allowance in the center front, but not in the waistband, obviously. You wanna do that correctly. <laughs> so I just need to match everything up in the center here and ease everything in if I have to, but it seems like it actually kind of works out that way. And with all of that prepared, I'm gonna sew the waistband onto the skirt. You want to iron the seam allowance into the waistband and then once the zipper is in basically this is just gonna flop down. I'm probably gonna add some bias binding and have this knot ironed upwards so that I am sure to catch the uh, you know seam allowance while top stitching and then you also have a clean finish on the inside so I'm probably gonna add bias binding there. But now we have to do essentially the same with the facing at the hem. So you also want to prepare that and I'm just gonna iron one centimeter inwards so that I have a clean edge and then for, uh, three centimeters upwards so four in total for my facing. Okay, now the hem is prepared and the last thing is to put the zipper in and then the belt loops obviously. And what I will be doing for the center front is basically to go around the whole thing, also this edge of the waistband and add some bias binding. So I'm gonna use one in a matching color and then just go around here and use bias binding to finish the edge. That way on the inside, it's also gonna look really nice once the zipper is in as we're just gonna top stitch the zipper in place. So I'm just gonna go around the edge, like the center front and then also the upper edge of the waistband and have everything done in one go. And now I can go ahead and iron my seam allowance in the center front towards the inside. I already did that on one side. And prep the skirt for the zipper, like that. So essentially what I'm doing now is to just top stitch my zipper onto basically a fold line. So I wanna fold this away, like that, and then just align that with where the fold line of my waistband is gonna end up sitting, so somewhere here. And obviously the beginning of the zipper gets attached right here in the fold line of the hem and the in-between just gets matched up. I went ahead and actually 
shortened my zipper to be the exact length of my skirt. I'm gonna include the measurements for your zipper obviously in my pattern though, so you can go ahead and buy one that fits better than mine. But honestly, like shortening a zipper is super easy. You just need some pliers and then you just rip out the teeth and sometimes you can, you know, the stopper up here, sometimes you can reuse it. This time it broke though, so I just added some, you know, thread. I just sewed basically a stopper on, which is totally fine as well. You just need something thicker than the teeth basically so that your sledge cannot go over top. And before I add the other side, I'm actually gonna sew this in, I'm gonna top stitch this in, and then I'm gonna close it and mirror the sides so that it is perfectly symmetrical. And with the zipper zipped back up, I can now put this side exactly where it needs to sit. And this just makes it super easy to match both sides up. I don't have to measure anything. I don't have to, you know, redo anything. It's just working, basically. And basically with, you know, a few points pinned, I can open up the zipper because it's easier to pin. Be careful with all of your needles. And then I can go ahead and pin the rest the in between as it's much easier that way. And let's also flip away that upper section of the zipper so that it's not in the way. Pin that in place and now we can also top stitch that side on. And voila! It all matches up really, really well, really, really nicely. Also down here, really happy about that. So let's fold the waistband down like that. And we're gonna add button loops at the very end. Just gonna pin it down here at the very end. Basically, it folds automatically over top here. And since I did not use my seam allowance, this just folds over top of the waistline very nicely. So I can simply just top stitch the waistband from the right side and everything on the inside will also be sewn down. So that is really, really nice. Okay, like that. And I'm just gonna go around the waistband. And essentially the same thing we're gonna do to the hemline. So that is already prepped and ready to go. So I just wanna pin this edge up as well. And I'm just gonna probably sew at 2.5, almost three centimeters. I ironed it up three centimeters. So I wanna do a little less than that, probably like 2.5. Okay, let's go around the hemline. Okay, belt loops. So I am just gonna go ahead and overlock the long sides of this belt loop piece, flip the two sides towards the inside and top stitch right and left of that piece so that I have a nice strip that I can then cut down to form the belt loops. I'm gonna need five in total. I'm gonna make them eight centimeters long and then I'm gonna sew them on. Okay, I have my five belt loops ready now and I'm going to just open up my zipper because it's easier to work on a flatter surface. I wanna place the first button loop right here and I'm just gonna fold in the edges on both the top and bottom. I think that's just the easiest. What you can also do is sew your belt loop in right here first so that it folds down and then just bar tack down here is probably what I will be doing. So I'm gonna add one right here in the front. I'm gonna do it in between the stitching of my pocket and the front dividing seam. I think that looks nice. Then the next one I'm gonna do like two centimeters behind the side seam. That's usually where that one lays. That one obviously right on top here. So it's, a gon it's gonna be a little bit off center, but it's just gonna look nicer for the eye once you actually have it on the seam and not in the center back. And then you repeat the same for the other sides and bar tag that in place. Once that's in place, I'm gonna fold it down. I'm gonna do that off camera because you know how that works. Fold it down, if 
fold also the edge towards the inside and bar tack it in place right here as well. And that is the skirt done. And that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed. If you haven't already, please hit subscribe down below and ring the bell so you will get notified every time that I post. I post on Sundays, so you can keep an eye out for that. It would also mean a lot if you could drop a comment down below just to boost the algorithm a little bit. It would help me out tremendously. These videos take a long time to make with everything that goes on behind the scenes. It would help me out if you could just boost the video a teeny tiny bit, maybe share it with some friends who might also be interested in sewing videos like this one. So thank you so much for that. If you are interested in tips and tricks, you can go over to my social media. Links are all in the description down below. I am doing short format content all around my projects every week. So hit follow there if you're interested. Also, as I said in the very beginning, the pattern hopefully will be available through the link in the description down below. If not, as I said, I will update on my Instagram stories once it is actually online. But if you find a link, none of that matters because it is already online and I managed to finish it in time. So go check that out. That's the most direct way to support me and keep videos just like this one coming. So thank you so much for that. Also a special thank you to my channel members. You can get exclusive benefits through the link in the description down below. So thank you so much for watching and I'm gonna see you next Sunday. Bye guys!